What's up everybody and welcome back to another video on the SAT from the Scalar Learning Channel. And yesterday, huge news was announced about the SAT because it is completely changing effective 2023 for international students and 2024 for domestic US students. So this video is gonna cover all of the changes, everything you need to know to adjust and adapt if you are indeed taking the new version of the SAT. Let's do it. So what are all of the changes where we're gonna go through them step by step? So the first change that I'm gonna discuss is the time length. So the current SAT is somewhere around three hours, give or take, depending on the breaks and all that stuff. Uh, but now they're going to condense that to two hours, which is kind of cool for a lot of test takers because if you think about it, one of the biggest obstacles is just building that endurance and being able to sit through and keep your brain functionality high throughout the test. So I think this is a great change because it's still gonna test for aptitude and so on and so forth, but it's gonna somewhat help students who are struggling with that endurance and maintaining energy levels. The next major change, which I'm super excited about, is they're changing from paper and pencil to all digital. So this is awesome because now you don't have to write down stuff, you don't have to bubble things in, you don't have to bring pencils. So this is gonna be a really nice change, I think, for most people. And it's gonna open the doors to a lot of great flexibility, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. The other new news is that it can be taken on a personal device like a laptop or a tablet, or even a school issue device if you don't have such a personal device. Moreover, the College Board has mentioned that if you lose connection while you're taking the test, Test. You're not going to lose time. You're not going to lose progress due to those connection issues. In terms of the location where the test will be offered, it's still going to be offered at either school or testing centers. So I think at one point they were trying to offer these tests at home, but for whatever reason, the locations for the time being are going to be limited to schools or testing centers. Now, this is pretty interesting in terms of the questions. They're now going to be dynamic, which means that every student is going to be getting a unique test. And this is going to open the doors for so many things because now the college board doesn't have to worry about some people taking it early and then test information being released because everybody's getting a dynamically created test with different questions so that's pretty interesting what this implies now they haven't said this but what this likely implies is that there's going to be more flexibility per test date so for example you might be able to come in at different times of the week or different times of the month to come in and take this test because there's not going to be this limited set of tests like everybody's taking the october on this date everybody's taking the november on this date, so on and so forth. Now, there's also going to be some substantive changes to the actual section. So, for example, the reading section looks like it's going to undergo a major transition. It's going to have shorter reading passages with only one question tied to each passage, which is kind of cool. And this reminds me of one of the sections in the LSAT where it's essentially you get like a small little paragraph and you answer a question just related to that tiny little blurb and then you move on. And according to the College Board, the passages will now reflect a wider range of topics. When it comes to the math section, you'll now be allowed to use a calculator throughout the entire test. And I find this interesting because I think it's gonna be more similar in that respect now to the ACT. And I do know from personal experience with a lot of my clients, a lot of students do choose the ACT simply because you can use the calculator throughout. So I think from a competitive standpoint, this will be very interesting and will persuade a lot of people to go back to the SAT maybe that we're thinking about the ACT for that reason. Now I do have to say from a personal test taking standpoint, when I take the SAT, I actually love the no calculator section. I think it's a great opportunity for people to shine when they they do have strong mental math skills, but it is what it is and this is how it's gonna be. Lastly, the College Board has also announced that scores will now be reported much more quickly. And that makes sense because it's probably gonna be scored almost instantaneously if it's done digitally. It'll take a lot of that human labor component out. So I imagine it could even turn around almost instantly like some other tests or maybe in a day or two, etc. cetera. Uh, and they did say that the scoring will still be out of 1600. So what does all of this mean now that they're making all of these changes and what does it mean for you as a student? So first of all, if you're taking the SAT this year, next year, it doesn't really matter. You're still gonna be taking the current version. So you're still gonna have to prep the exact same way. For students that are taking the SAT in 2024, what does it effectively mean for you? My assumption is that the content for the math portion isn't going to change that dramatically. At least they haven't said so. So I think that's going to stay relatively consistent. I think if you are prepping for this new reading section, that might slightly change the dynamic of how you're going to prepare. We'll have to wait until practice resources become available for that. But again, if you're taking it in 2024, you got plenty of time, nothing to worry about. When it comes to why the College Board is making all these changes, I have to believe 
that they have been having an open dialogue and conversation with a lot of colleges and universities have been collecting feedback and have probably realized that this is going to be a more effective way to evaluate students. Moreover, from a business standpoint, it's going to be a lot more attractive to students if you compare it to other alternatives like the ACT. For me, I think all of these changes are great. I do think it's going to improve access. I think it's going to be a better process and a better experience for everybody. I like the reduced time in terms of being two hours instead of three hours. So I think this is great. I do think that these standardized tests provide a great metric for universities to compare students and so on and so forth. So I think everything is moving in the right direction. And in a lot of ways, all of the things that have happened in the last few years has actually created, in my opinion, was probably going to be a better test, which is going to be a better experience for students and universities alike. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please click that like button. And if you want to see more videos from the Scalar Learning channel, make sure to click subscribe. Thank you guys so much for joining. And I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.